Welcome to the Central Florida Gardening Show. All right, welcome back to the Central Florida Gardening Show. I am Chris. Tiva is our videographer this time, so she will not be in this episode. I have my daughter here, Araya, and she is a, a grower of carnivorous plants. So we developed, uh, after doing some talking, uh, a box to put the carnivorous plants in. It's going to be um, a little place to display these, and she has uh, four carnivorous plants right now. And I'm going to let Araya talk about these in a minute. Right now I'm going to talk about this box and how we did this and where this came from. Our neighbor across the street gave us a wine box. So this is a wine box and then I went and purchased about $10 worth of hardware and wood at um, Ace Hardware. Uh, each one of these were about 99 cents for these legs. Kind of expensive really but um, you know it's not that bad really. And they were already cut the length then we got some corner braces, then we reinforced the wine box with wood glue, with nails. We put nails in all of the seams. Uh, we reinforced the bottom with uh, perpendicular here uh, to um, uh, the, the actual line where it was put together. We also wood glued the center. We also drilled holes for drainage in the bottom of the wine box. And um, this last week, it took a lot of work to get this box ready. But we spent, uh, each day for the last seven days, we've taken mineral oil, and we've coated every part of this box with mineral oil to waterproof it. So it's finally ready for planting their carnivorous plants. Right, Araya is going to talk to us about some of these plants. So I'm going to pick these up and ask her some questions about them because um, I'm kind of curious. I don't spend a lot of time looking at carnivorous plants or researching them. Um, I'm de I, w I want to focus on um, vegetables and fruits and food. So what is this? This is a scarlet bell pitcher plant. A scarlet bell pitcher plant. It's, one of the good, it's a good plant for the starters, so I'm still a beginner. So, so why is this good for the beginner? It doesn't really take a lot of work. You just need to trim it and water it, mostly. What's it called? Scarlet Bell Pitcher Plant. The Scarlet Bell Pitcher Plant. Um, what are these down here? Looks like you did some trimming. Yeah, a lot of it. This one, I haven't been watering very much, so it was getting dried out. I need to trim all the dead ones off. Oh, okay. What's the purpose of trimming the dead ones? Um, when you trim them, if you don't trim it, it will die. Oh, okay, so they need to be taken off. That you that way the plant can focus on the living ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I understand. That makes sense. How about this guy? What's this? I'm not really sure what that was. You just bring it home. Oh, I got this for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I found this at Autobahn Market on Mondays at Stardust Video here in Orlando. And uh, there's a gentleman up there that sells our carnivorous plants, and I picked this up from him for a few dollars. Uh, what what is this? It's another pitcher plant. A I pitcher. think this one will get a lot bigger. I'm not really sure though. Okay. All right. If there are any viewers that know, carnivor know about carnivorous plants, please tell me what this is. All right. So make a comment uh, under this video if you know what this particular pitcher plant variety is. Okay. Well, so uh, what is this right here? This is a sundew. A sundew. Really, I don't know what this one is either. That's another one you bring home. From Stardust oh, video. Oh, I brought this one home? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if anybody knows what this variety of sundew is, make a comment under our video if you would, please. This is a Venus flytrap. Um, Can we get a shot of this Venus flytrap, Tiva? It's a smaller variety of the carnivorous plants. Some There are some purple carnivorous plants and pink ones. They're, I think they're rarer than some of the other ones and they're harder to find. All these plants live in bogs which is a very um, moist area which has lots of what would you say mud and kind of detritus yeah all green stuff. okay um how about these roots what happened here well i didn't know how big this was going to get and the tap roots have gone through this small hole in the bottom of the container and they've really grown a lot and i didn't know this was happening because they were inside this 
So my dad opened it today. I was like, oh my gosh. So we put some small holes at the bottom, and we're going to put them inside the dirt when we put it in, which is this right here. You might want to tell them what's in the dirt. Yeah, this is mainly just um, organic uh, peat moss. You can only have poor soil yeah, for you don't, carnivorous plants. That's right. You don't want to, from what Araya tells me from her research, you don't really want to use um, high concentration nutrient-based soils and yep. things with a lot of nutrients because the, uh, why is that? Well, they live in a bog, and there's no no nutrients at all in the bog. So the way they get their nutrients is from eating insects. If you come closer, Tiva, you can look inside the Venus flytrap if you can, camera. If you see one that's open, get close to it. If you can see, very, there's very there's three, well actually six, three on each leaf, very, very tiny hairs on the leaves, and that's what triggers the... Um, cage to shut. Let's see. You have a stick. Let's see. Here, Tiva. So, you touch one hair and that sets off a timer in the carnivorous plant. If you touch two, that's when it shuts. Let's see if I can get it to work. Up oh, there it went. Could you see that, Tiva? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so these are very... I think these seem more evolved than most plants. So that's why you need poor soil. If you have nutrients in the soil, it will kill them. Okay, I'll take that. And there's also peat moss. You said this. Mm-hmm. Like squirrel. And what else? There's. It has peat moss and um, forest product compost. It's like bark and leaves. So like bark and leaves, and um, so and it also has spagma, spagma peat moss. That's another thing that's good for them. And some um, perlite. Which is basically just to allow a lot of good, loud drainage. But I don't think these plants care about drainage. No, they don't really need that much drainage. In a bog, you wouldn't get much. So, so I don't think these holes are that necessary just to keep the wood nice. Yeah, yeah, I think the holes we made for these particular plants are going to be used to pretty much just keep the water constantly off this wood because it'll rot a lot quicker because these plants really like a bog condition they don't really like well-drained soil so if you decide to do this keep the holes small that's and right don't put that many. yeah I don't think I made these more than a quarter inch um, okay so all right well let's get our let's get our growing medium in here and uh, get these transplanted all right, so we're going to get our growing medium in here. And again, this is a peat, mainly peat moss, spagma moss, and a little bit of detritus from forest products. We got this from Urban Sunshine on hanging moss. Great guys in there, uh, Keith and Mike. And um, this is make, makes this fast. And I bought this product before. It's pretty good. I've used it as a, a partial mix to soil to do soil amendments with. Make, it retains moisture really well. Plus it's only $6 a bag. If this fails, then you might... Don't use this unless you know it works. We do not know if it will work. Yes, we do not know. This is an experiment. It does have some forest products, which could present a problem if it starts putting too many nutrients out. Too much. Because these plants don't really need a lot of nutrients. They take all their nutrients from bugs they eat. Mm -hmm. Which is another thing. The pitcher plants, I don't think I said this before. Can we look up closely? This one's kind of dehydrated, but usually there would be um, moisture, like a water substance inside of the leaves. That's what catches the bugs. And if you look right here, you can see hairs. That prevents the bugs from crawl crawling back out. There's also some other carnivorous plants that live underwater called a bladder wart. And the bugs, like mosquito larva, will get into them, and they will form a bubble around them, sort of. I've only seen it once, though. They're pretty cool. Okay, that's enough to start off with. Let's go ahead and get the big plastic one, because yes. that's probably going to take almost the whole, almost the whole depth. You want it right there? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So just put our. Yeah, there you go. Just don't get it on top of them. Make sure you keep it right there. Here, you can just kind of shove it. I think it'll be fine. 
That way we don't take any chances on throwing dirt on top of the, um, into the traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these Venus fly traps are really cool. There are some sun news also that will curl up to catch their prey. I'm not sure what this one is, but it doesn't seem to curl up that much. The bugs just seem to stick to them. But some, you can see this one kind of curled up, they'll go all the way down. There's some, like the dwarf sun news, which are a little smaller, they kind of lay flat. They're like, they're rounded and they curl up like that and grab the bugs. It's pretty cool to watch. And these ones have, these pitcher plants also have, usually have um, a water-like substance in them. I think the bugs, not all these are open, so I guess the bugs just crawl in. I don't know what keeps them in there though. They don't shut or anything. We better get those in. Mm -hmm. You want the, um, the big uh, pitchers right here? Yeah. Okay. We'll break it. Yeah, well let's, let's go ahead and take these out. That's a good idea. You know what? We could. I already started. Changing. We could just allow the roots to come out of the holes here. Nah, let's just break it. You want to come? Just come out? Yeah. Okay. We'll break it, and we'll just take that out of there and get that baby planted in here. I think I've got enough space for you. That's that one's kind of deep. You gotta be really, really careful with these. They're very sensitive. It's a very these are very hard plants to grow. They like full sun, but lots of water. Yeah, I think that's sort of a miscommunication. I've heard people say that carnivorous plants need a lot of shade. Yeah, that's not right. So if you've heard that, um, they were mistaken. I'm not sure, but most do need full sun. I don't know if there are some that don't. So there might be some that need some shade. Here, I'll show you. I'm, I, just don't want I take these out all the time. I don't want just to turn it upside it. down. Oh, okay. And lay this thing in here. I think that looks... In fact, let's make this a little deeper. I can tell that, you know, this might need a little bit of root zone. That way it gives it... All right, we've given the uh, pitcher plant some quite a bit of um, space for the root, its its root zone, and we'll probably add some more to it. Yeah, we'll probably add some more to this. But let's go ahead with our available light, because the here in Florida we lose light really quick. It's only a little after five o'clock, and we're already sun's going down. Let's go ahead and um, where do you want the? Uh, Let's, let's see, uh, let's put the pitcher plant in. Okay, where do you want the pitcher? Beside the other one or over here? Or um, maybe right there? How about over here? Good. We want to leave some to put in here. I think we can put even more in here later. Yeah, I want some for Christmas. Oh, for Christmas. Okay. All right, we'll take it out. You saw how you do it. Yeah. Turn it upside down. We have some scissors. It should come out. We won't need scissors. Careful we should those. be able to. Those don't really have a stem to grab onto. I know. That's the bad thing about these. I have a squirrel ski to it. But I see, oh, there's a taproot without messing it up and get that taproot out of there. Look at that. We got that out without harming the taproot. Okay, there you go. Get that one situated. Sundew. And I'm going to get ready for the sundew. Sundew tight here and leave space here for a few more. Um, or do you want to spread it out somewhere else? How about we put it right here? Near okay. This. All right. Okay, she wants to put it right here beside the pitcher. I really don't know how big all these are going to get. That's true. And the Raya. If here, this one's said, easy to get out. If they, if they need shade, then why is the sun do called the sun do? Well, those don't need shade. I don't know if there's any other kinds that I don't know of. That For the most shade. part, well, from what we know from our research, what Araya found out is that carnivorous plants need a lot of full sun. They, Not a lot. It's a normal amount. Normal amount. They sit out here all day in it, though. Yeah, and they're fine. And they've been they've been great. If you live in... Um, okay, well, now we'll add some more. I don't think I would grow these in a colder climate. Florida's a great place to grow them. And they go mm -hmm. dormant. Aren't uh, fly traps native to the Carolinas? I think so. Yeah, probably. I want to see what happens if I cut that. 
Yeah, I think Venus flytraps are native to. Oh, also. In fact, Venus flytraps, might, that might be one of their only home. Oh, the they, Carolinas. they only do live in one place. I think it is the Carolinas. The oh, bogs. Also, yeah. Tivo, come over here. I do not really know what this is, so if you are a carnivorous plant person, please tell me what this stem-like thing is coming out. So I'm not really sure what it is. Are you trimming it? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know what it is, and I don't want to kill it unless it's part of the plant, but it doesn't look like it to me. It's the same color, but it doesn't look like it's going to flower. I was a purple. Think. For my book, it was purple. Now, what kind of water do you have to use on these? You can only, you cannot ever, ever use tap water. It will kill them. Um, you can use water with no minerals. They don't like minerals. Um, just water from. We get. We just take our drinking water. So give them drinking water or distilled water. So pretty, pretty distilled yeah. and clean. You don't want any minerals or fluoride or oh, definitely not fluoride. chlorine or anything like uh, that no, going yeah. into the root chlorine. zones. Don't give them pool or tap water. Okay, let me go get some water. Oh, that looks really nice. Mm. Right, let's give these things some water. And uh, like Araya was saying, the water we're using on these is for uh, it's our drinking water the reverse it's osmosis amazing. type of water yeah. so there's no minerals or chlorine or anything all right so um, thank you Araya for talking to us today about the carnivorous plants and we'll have another episode probably in six months to a year and let you know how let you know how these plants did in this they planter died or not.